In 1832, the collieries in the Colville area were connected to Leicester by steam railway, but in order to reach the Swannington mines, a major geographical obstacle had to be overcome. I often walk on the Swannington incline. As you can see, it's just the most beautiful place. But today, I'm here to meet Owen Bailey of the Swannington Heritage Trust, and he's going to tell me about why the incline was built. Hello. If we'd been standing here before the incline was built, We'd be standing on the edge of a very steep slope, a very, very steep slope. Looking at the Ordnance Survey map, it can be seen that the 140 metre contour runs across just the side of that bridge. The 115 metre contour is just a few paces that way, which meant in that short distance, the, 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 the drop was 25 metres. Impossible to build a railway. And so the solution was to build an inclined plane. Robert Stevenson, who engineered the railway, he built a, a, a deep cutting all the way down from the top down to here and then a steep embankment from here all the way down to the bottom which resulted in a, um, a gradient of 1 in 17 all the way down. Well here we are at the top of the incline. As we saw nearer the bottom, the incline itself managed to flatten out the very steep drop halfway down. But that still resulted in an incline of 1 in 17 which was too much for a locomotive to carry, to, to haul. And so they relied on a winding engine in the building just over here to pull wagons up. The winding engine could pull up three wagons at a time at the end of a half mile rope. By the way, when the original rope was bought in 1833, it cost 78 pounds, which I believe is equivalent to 9,500 pounds today. So the engine was over here, attached to a flywheel, which was then attached to the winding drum. Fortunately, the engine can still be seen today. After 144 years of sterling service, it was saved when the incline was dismantled and is now having a happy retirement in the York Railway Museum with blendings in a new coat of paint. Most people are surprised to learn that this machine here went nothing to do with the incline. When the, the pits in Swanlington closed down but by the mid-1870s, they all filled with water which found its way down to the newer mines in Colville causing flooding there. The solution was to put a very large pumping engine into the shaft of the uh, Calcutta pit, which was one of the redundant ones. And this machine was used to lift the pumping rods out of the Calcutta shaft for maintenance. The installation of the pumping engine in Calcutta actually gave the incline a second life. Previously, as you know, it had been used to hold coal up the incline to onward transmission to Leicester. But when the pumping engine was installed, it had to take coal down to feed the boilers of the pumping engine. That continued from 1877 right through to 1947 when the pump was converted to electric power. Uh, the last empty trucks were hauled up the incline early from 1948 and the incline was officially closed. So when the Swanson Heritage Trust bought the incline in 1984 it had been used by a builder for a number of years to dump waste from the mines and so the incline up here which is in the deep cutting was completely filled up with mine waste. Church Lane Bridge here was supported by mine waste because it was damaged by mining subsidence. The Potato Lane Bridge further up was completely ruined, as was the Cattle Arch Bridge down at the bottom there. So the, the Trust spent several years removing all the waste. The Cattle Arch Bridge at the bottom was renovated by some of the last mining engineers from Snibston Mine in 1986. The Church Lane Bridge here was renovated by the council because that carries a public highway. And the Potato Lane Pedestrian Bridge right at the top um, was jointly renovated by the council and the trust, but now that's fully maintained by the trust. Can people walk the whole length of the incline? Unfortunately not. There is a small patch right at the bottom that the trust doesn't own. So if you walk on down to see how high the embankment is or examine the Cattle Arts Bridge, which I hope you will, then you have to retrace your steps and come back up here again. 